Okay, figure it's uh, time to make a beginner guide to AV uploads and tutorial for uh, getting your AV that you just purchased uh, through Gumroad or wherever else you may have got it from. The very first thing you're going to need to do is go log in to VRChat.com on the left, click on downloads, and it'll take you here. First thing you're going to want to do is download the SDK. Now, the avatar creator, wherever you purchase from, should say if it's SDK 3 or SDK 2. Just click on whatever one you want. I suggest just download them both so you just have both available. Then you're going to want to download Unity. Click on the link for Unity. Now, if you're only going to be using Unity just for VR chat, this download current version of Unity right here. If you're going to be uh, using Unity for more than one thing, like here or Chill Out VR or any other things, you're going to want to download Unity Hub and then follow the instructions for downloading the correct Unity version for Unity Hub. It's a little bit different. Um, but here, you just click on current version of Unity. Click right there. It'll take you to where you can download that version of Unity. If you could be using Unity Hub, click here to install Unity Hub. And if you're gonna be installing Unity Hub, make sure you click on here and then it'll pop this open and then open Unity and it'll bring up Unity after you have Unity Hub installed and install that version of Unity. You would have to do the same thing for Show Out VR or anything else. It's very important to make sure you get this correct version of Unity all the way to the last digit of F1. If you get this 2018 Unity or 2018.4, it's not going to work or you may have problems. So once you have Unity installed and set up, start a new uh, project, name it, get into Unity. Once you get in Unity, the very first thing you're going to need for any AV is Dynamic Bones. So to search for Dynamic Bones, purchase it. I think it's like 13 or bucks or something like that, maybe 10 bucks. And then you click on Download, Import, click Import again. It will take a few seconds to import it. And boom, it's done. It's down there. Next thing you're going to need to do is grab your SDK package. I'm going to be doing a SDK3 avatar. Grab the newest one here. You see I've downloaded multiple different versions because they update it occasionally. You can see how long it was since the last update. Um, but you just drag it right over here. And it'll look like it's lagging. Then you click import. And then this is where it takes a few minutes, depending on your computer. Fast computer doesn't take too long. If you're slow, but slower computer, it's really processor intensive. Um, so if you have a slower processor, Unity in general will be more sluggish and take longer. If you have a higher end processor, it'll be a lot better, but it's still, it's a game engine. That's what Unity is. This is what VRChat runs on. This is what other games that use Unity for the game engine run on. So Unity is very powerful. It does a lot. So that's why it's pretty heavy weight on your computer. It looks like it's installed. You can see it down here. The very first thing that I always like to do is go up here to the VRChat SDK. Show control panel. I drag it up to the top bar here. Usually I put it right there. And then you're gonna want to sign in. For some reason I'm not signed in already, which is kind of weird, but let me fix that. Okay, after you're signed in, what are you gonna to wanna to do first? Um, because this will save a lot of time when you're uploading your avatar, because it will run this every single time you upload your avatar, is go to settings and then uncheck the future proof. I have not figured out any reason for leaving this checked. I haven't heard anybody tell me any reason. Just sure there's probably some reason. But I haven't had any problems with any of my worlds or any of my avatars by turning that off. So now that you got the SDK installed, next thing you're going to want to do is grab your Unity package for whatever AV you have um, and just try to get into Unity. Now, the thing you're going to want to make sure of when you're doing this is a lot of times AVs will have multiple different uh, Unity packages, requests, or regular. So make sure you're grabbing the right one because uh, you don't want to 
upload a work on a quest one and then uh, worry about why it doesn't look as good or something like that or is missing some options. So after you do that, click import. And depending on the EV, um, it can take just a couple minutes. I've had this take 10 minutes uh, for some of the bigger, more complicated avatars. Um, specifically chose this one because this one's a little bit less complicated even though it's 3.0. But it's a smaller one, doesn't have as uh, many details on it, so it doesn't take as long to import. Okay, after you uh, after finish importing, it will just look just like this. You're probably wondering where it is. And up down here, underneath projects, that's where it is. You have your main uh, tree down here. Um, depending on who makes your avatar, it may just be right under here. Uh, it may be deeper down, uh, it all depends. A lot of the good avatar makers will just put it right here. Um, and then uh, you just, you know, you think you'd drag this one in, but you don't. You just double click on this, and poof, there it is. Sometimes it will say um, different version of your avatar, like with the uh, Zeus models and other ones from uh, Cyberware that he makes like multiple different versions of them down there and you just double click on each one that you want to work on and edit but yeah here's your avatar um, you can go in here change things around if you want to get more uh, detailed you can turn things on and off so stuff doesn't show up uh, you can edit things uh, you can click on your main avatar here and then you have all your texture files this one has Pyomi um, if I'm saying that correctly and you can do tons of different adjustments in here. Um, if it doesn't want to do that, when you click on it, you just go over here and click on the body on the left, and then you'll see this pop up. You can adjust a whole bunch of different things in here, and if you want to see where the actual texture file for editing, you click on this right here, and it'll poof, show you right here where it is. And then if you want to edit that somewhere, you can just do show and explore, and there it is, you can open it up in whatever editing program. But some avatar makers will include substance painter, PSD files, so you can do all that without having to edit these flat texture files, which makes it a lot easier. Um, some of the things you can uh, adjust in Unity is dynamic bones, you can change the way things work and flow and move. Um, sometimes if you're having problems uploading avatar where it says you don't have the rights, to upload avatar, click on the main avatar on the left in the setup scene area in the hierarchy, and then scroll all the way down to you see the VRC uh, pipeline manager right here, right above VRC, VRC descriptor, that's usually where it is. Um, and you might see a blueprint ID here from the avatar maker. They may have forgot to detach it. Just hit detach, it'll blank out. So then when you go to build and upload your avatar, your blueprint ID to your avatar will be assigned to it and it will let you upload. Um, and after you're done editing your avatar, getting everything done, make sure you save Unity multiple times while you're doing it because Unity does sometimes likes to crash and it's nothing worse than doing a bunch of work and it crashes and you lose everything. So when you're ready to upload, literally all you do is click on the VR chat, click on Builder. If you see any red stop signs in here, just click and do auto fix on it. Most good avatars are, are less complicated avatars, won't have any problems. Some of the cyberware models, there might be one or two things that you might have to click auto fix on. It's not like the avatar is broken, it's just that Unity is picky. <laughs> um, and then after that, you just hit uh, build and publish for Windows. It'll take a little bit of time to do its thing. Again, this is all dependent on your computer because. Uh, it uses a lot of processor and some of your GPU, but it can take a few minutes for this to happen. So after that, it will take you to the screen here, and then you can name your avatar, set description. Make sure you check these if any of these do apply to your avatar. It's very important um, to not get your avatar deleted or banned. Another thing you're going to want to do is make sure this is always set to private unless you actually own the full rights to your avatar and or the avatar maker is allowing you to make it public. Do not ever make it public. Um, if you don't like this picture you're seeing over here, you can go over to VR cam on the left here when you click back to scene and then over here you can move this up and down. I usually like to move the avatar, uh, move it to where you want to move it. Make sure you're always clicked on the top hierarchy. 
you can rotate it and stuff but then you can see on cam where it is now if you want to set a custom background to what your avatar looks like you can just go up to here 3d object create a cube make the cube bigger you can move the cube around and then you can import a picture and paste it on there and then you can have an actual picture behind your avatar and you can see how it updates here I just didn't really care but you can see how it works there um, after you're ready to upload just check this box hit upload it will take anywhere from a few minutes to 30 minutes or even an hour if you have a slow upload speed on your uh, internet connection um, it really is dependent on your upload speed for your internet connection and that's it um, if you had any other questions um, just leave them in a the comment I will do a little bit more advanced avatar video here in the, after this one and uh, we'll show you some more of the details you can do in unity